If I were to start a new fresh account in Star Rail today, Trailblazer level 69 down to Trailblazer level one, what would I do? To be honest, a lot has happened in the last six months and seeing that the PS5 release is right around the corner, I was just thinking to myself, what would I have done differently? So today, I'm gonna to talk about what I think were my best moves, my biggest regrets, and therefore what I would do if I started today. And if we do have some veterans watching and you have some learnings of your own or disagree with some of mine, then feel free to let us know down in the comments. All right then, I guess with that said, let's start off with the first question, which is, should you re-roll? And I know some of you are gonna be like, oh, you can't re-roll on the PS5. Yeah, true, but you can actually re-roll on PC, link your PS5 account, and then continue playing. Now, if you don't have a PC, then yeah, no re-rolling for you. But if I remember correctly, re-rolling on this standard banner right here took about 20 minutes and re-rolling on the limited, which is gone for now, that one actually took about 30 to 40 minutes. And so generally speaking, people are gonna be like, oh, it's not worth re-rolling because of like the crazy amount of time. But if you do have the patience, in my opinion, I think it definitely is worth re-rolling, especially if you are able to hit on the limited banner. Like sure, it can be a massive time sink, but let me run you through what happened to me. This is my pool history, and I had to sink 153 pools to get the first limited character, Zilla. And I've used her so much, like absolutely no regrets. But imagine if I didn't have to sink 153 pulls here and I was able to just start with the Zilla and invest that 153 pulls in another character that would be utterly insane. And so the reality is, is that we actually are faced with a very, very similar situation. If we started today, PS5 gamers or whoever will be joining when Jing Liu is going to be on the limited. And she is going to be an absolute powerhouse. You're going to be using her a lot. And if you're able to get her on your rerolls and not have to spend 150 pulls like I did, that is freaking cracked out. The odds are absolute trash. I believe it's like 0.6 or 0.7%. And it's up to you to kind of determine whether your time is worth that money. Especially if you're in a region where 150 pulls equates to like 200 or 300 USD. For some people, that's actually a whole month's salary. And in that case, I think it's definitely, definitely, definitely worth it. All right, so aside from that, I wanna talk about the standard re-rolling because there are people kind of like myself who just re-rolled on the beginner banner and they were kind of just like trying to look at optimizing these characters over here. And so these are the possible characters. We've got Himiko, we've got Welt, we've got Bronya, Japad, Clara, Yenching as well as Bailu. And before I do get into it, what I will say is that all of them are good and they will work very, very well all the way to end game. So even if you do get like my last preference, don't sweat it because they will be immense value. And also as always, if you do have a favorite character, go for them. Like if I got a Himeko, I wouldn't be crying. So for me personally, in terms of desirability, I would say that number one, Bronya, number two, Welt, number three, Clara, Number four, Japad. Number four also, kind of in the same tier, Bailu. And then number six, Himeko, finally with Yenching at number seven. Let me explain the rationale. Bronya, I think, is going to be a unanimous first because to this day, she is still one of the most overloaded supports in the game. She gives massive offensive buffs as well as extra turns, which sounds really freaking cracked out because it is. And for most characters, she actually changes how you play the game, where there's even a concept of changing your play style depending on if your Bronya is fast or slow. What's interesting is that when I think about it, it might be because there haven't been any other five-star harmony units limited five-star offensive buffers. I don't think there's been any of them introduced in the game yet, but as it stands right now, she is firmly in the core of the game. And so number two for me is definitely going to be Welch because he is a, well, he's really interesting. And the reason is because he can be played as both a debuffer, an imaginary main DPS, or even a mix. And the best thing is that he actually does really freaking well in all of those roles and is a really great flex pick when you're like, oh, the enemy has an imaginary weakness, let's bring Welt. On top of that, imaginary units at this point in the game are still very rare. I'm pretty sure it's the rarest element. And so all of that is why Welt would be my second pick. Now in third place for me, it's gonna be Clara. And she's a really interesting one because yes, she is a DPS, but that is not all she is. When she's finally fully built, she also serves as an off tank, a damage dealer, a shield breaker, and a very skill point positive character overall. And it's mainly because of that skill point positive attribute 
that makes her really, really freaking valuable. For me personally, she was actually the second DPS that I built and I definitely do not regret it at all. However, there is one other consideration and it's that there is going to be another physical DPS coming out very, very soon. I believe in like the next two months. So you should just keep that in mind. All right, so after that, we've got Japad, which is a ice shielder, as well as Bailu, who is a lightning healer. Sustain units. And early on in the game, they were like, pretty much the top priority considering a lot of us were just kind of struggling with no healers. But the state of the game has changed quite significantly and I think this is going to depend heavily on what else you were able to pull. For about 90% of the game, I would say that you'd be able to get away with Natasha who is the free healer, March 7th, and the Fire Trailblazer. But if you're able to actually land a Lynx, honestly, you're pretty set. And to be honest, it's really thanks to this little healer's existence that I can say that Bailu as well as Jepard, these two are just not that high priority anymore. Now, what I will say is that if you do pull either of them, it is definitely not the end of the world because it is going to make your team a lot more comfortable but Lynx herself is just so wonderful that you can get away with somebody else. On top of that, however, we will probably see Locha, who is one of the top tier sustainers, rerun very soon. And so if you do feel like you are lacking in the sustain department, I would probably hold out for this guy. But again, Bailu, Japad, fantastic, but they're just like no longer critical. And so lastly, we have Himiko as well as Yanqing, and they are in a pretty interesting position because they are pretty solid DPSs, definitely good enough to clear the entire game, but they have substitutes that are going to be accessible very, very soon. So for example, Yanqing, this guy on the screen, he is an ice DPS. However, by the time you see this video, you will probably see Jingliu, limited banner, another ice DPS on rate up. And if I was starting today, I would probably dump all of my gems into her banner because this banner is actually so incredibly high value until I get her. On the other hand, Himiko, who is a fire DPS, is about to gain a substitute with this character here, Topaz, who is another fire DPS. And we can expect her in about uh, three weeks time. And so therefore, if you are looking for a fire DPS, you could roll for her instead and get another character on the beginner banner or standard banner. But if we're gonna talk in terms of like power level, I would say that generally speaking, the trend has been that all limited characters are better than the standard characters, which is another reason why I would deprioritize Himiko and Yenqing. You really do want the best DPS. All right, so next let's talk about progression and investment. So you're level one and you've just entered the game. What should you actually invest into? Generally speaking, the priority is almost always like this. The top priority is leveling your character levels. So old mate over here is level one out of 20, smash that level, auto add and level him up to 20 out of 20. And then after that, you use ascension materials to push, push, push. Priority number two is to level up the light cones. So these guys over here, you can see level 50, level 80. And the TLDR is that these are essentially your weapons. And the reason that the character level and the weapons are most important is because they affect your base stats, which are then multiplied by all of your different equipment and all of that. As a new Honkai star railer, you don't want to be splitting investment into multiple places. So what I'm gonna say is that you need to build a team of four and you are only going to build these four characters first and then build another four later. I'll talk about that later when we get there. Okay, so one, two, three, four characters level up for everyone, Lycones level up for everyone. However, the priority will always be your DPS because levels matter when damage is calculated. Now, when you find yourself level capped or light cone capped, the next thing you're gonna focus on is your traces over here. Most characters have a specific purpose. So for example, we got this Lynx over here. She is a healer. Therefore, we really only want to level her healing skills. Or on the other hand, we've got Pella and Pella is known for her defense down. And so therefore we should only upgrade her defense down, which is this one over here enemy's defense is reduced by 37%. Sometimes they also have like other really good skills, whether it's their actual skill or talents, whatever. For Pella, it's this one over here. This essentially helps her ultimate more, but the philosophy, the general principle is the same. I don't touch the auto attack because I don't care about her damage. I don't touch her skill because I don't care about its damage either. Now, this was actually my first mistake because I kind of unga bunga just smashed everything. For example, you can see my Lorcha has level four attack. You can see my Silver Wolf support five out of six, Bailu, 
four out of six, but over time I learned to be a little bit more conservative. So you can see my Asta 10, five, nine, one. And so yeah, that's your second priority. You're probably going to be doing this for a while to be honest. And so as you keep progressing through the game, it's going to start giving you these four star relics over here, which is essentially your character equipment. All I can say here is that smash them to plus 12 and use them. Do not be stingy here. I was, and I screwed my progression for ages, missing out on a lot of jemmies. These relics are probably the most important things in the game for gains, and they can be recycled for EXP. So like when you find a good five star relic that you like, you can actually smash this plus 12 into this one with very little loss. So therefore, for your four characters, one, two, three, four, you want plus 12 relics, four star on all of them. And then at some point, you're gonna be able to start farming for relics themselves. So this one over here, Cavern of Corrosion. If your characters are in a good place, I would start farming for these five star relics. And what I mean by a good place is this in particular. Your DPS is at 70 out of 80, fully ascended with their traces looking something like this, 5888, all of the major traces over here up. The light cone that they're using, 80 out of 80. In terms of your supports, they should look like this. 60 out of 70 for level or 70 out of 80. I probably would just go 60 out of 70 or maybe even 70 out of 70. And their key trace, which again for Pella is the defense down, probably at about an eight. Or if it's a four star, you could even go to 10 if you want. The light cones themselves, I would actually probably push to 80 like this one over here. And all of their relics are looking like this, four star and plus 12. Now this is probably the place where I made what I think is my biggest mistake. Because if I have a look at my Zilla, she is actually 80 out of 80. I look at my Silver Wolf, also 80 out of 80. And I smashed some of their traces up to nine and 10. And the reason that this is such a massive mistake is because the amount of resources required to take somebody from 70, like my Bailu over here, to take her from 70 all the way to 80, so these resources over here, or to actually take those traces from eight to nine to 10, I could have actually taken another character from level one, Old May Arlen over here, all the way to level 70 and probably got like really far with the traces as well. So what I'm saying is that especially as an early gamer, do not go past 70 and just invest into other characters because that coverage is going to help you clear content. For me, Zilla, Silver Wolf, two of my most favorite characters, I just smashed them to 80 because I love them. However, I only had one team and so I could not clear two sides of MOC. And to explain what MOC is, that's pretty much the end game content. That's this guy down here, Forgotten Hall, Memory of Chaos. For you Genshin gamers, this is your abyss. So yeah, if I were to do it all again, I would stop all of my DPSs at what my Clara is looking like. 70 out of 80, max out light cone, 80 out of 80, and 5, 8, 8, 8. All right, and so let's say that we actually made it there. One, two, three, four, with all of those prerequisites I just said. At this point, I would say it's fine to go ahead and farm a set for everybody. So just this guy over here. And in terms of recommendations for finding out uh, which skills you should actually max out on which character, as well as which set is best on which character, I would just use this website, pridewin.gg, go over to characters and click on literally any one of them. And if you scroll down far enough, you will see best relic sets as well as the skill priority. Although for DPSs, generally you're probably going to almost max them out. So yeah, relic farming, this is your end game loop. And by now you should have access to these five star ones. I would just farm a set for everybody and smash all of them to plus 12. Don't be too picky about the substats. So as you can see over here, I just got a plus 12 five star relic. I just haven't pushed it to plus 15. And the reason is because the amount of EXP that it takes to go from plus 12 all the way to plus 15 that resource you can actually funnel into another piece to take it from plus zero up to plus 12. So yeah, I think you can start to see that the diminishing returns are actually massive in this game. And then when you finally find a piece that's better than what you have right now, so for example, like this one over here, what you can do is you can just slam your previous plus 15, plus 12, whatever, to get plus 14 and a little bit more, and then just overwrite it and use your new piece. And then finally, when all of your team members have pretty passable sets, plus 12, plus 15, whatever, I would probably start to look at leveling more supports to start building for your team too. All right, so that should actually give you a pretty good idea as to where you should invest your energy every day. However, there was actually one thing that changed massively as the game updated, and it was the scarcity of money credits, this guy right here. For quite a while, Everyone was actually a brokey. Yeah, not only maidenless, but also cashless. But then what happened was that as we got more events, so these guys over here, we started getting flooded with money. And so I think that for me personally, my best move that I've made in the game 
was barely farming for these guys over here credits. On top of that, I've somehow gotten away with barely farming for EXP as well as uh, light cone EXP. And it's completely okay for you to farm them if you do need the resources, but for me, to this day, six months later, I've probably not farmed these guys like more than 15 times. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, let's start talking about the tier list, except not really, because in early game, you're gonna by and large ignore all tier lists. And the reason you'll do that is because you are a new player and you actually don't have that many options. But what I will talk about is kind of like the investment into these characters and the ones who have huge staying power. Okay, so as a new player, you are going to be looking at E0 characters because you don't have enough pulls to get to E6. I'm gonna start with the offensive support as well as the defensive support columns because they're just so much more straightforward than the damage dealers. Of all of the offensive supports that you see, Bronya, Silver Wolf, Pella, Tingyun, Welt, Asta, Yukong, every single one is worth investing into. Now, what I will say is I'm going to single out Yukong and say that she is probably the only one that I would say is less of a priority to invest into simply because she is a little bit less flexible than the rest of them. Statistically speaking, if I were able to run like a census or like a, a study on all of the characters that were used, every single one of these characters are being used millions and millions of times every day. Now I can't say that about all of the other characters. On the defensive support side, you're gonna pick two of them. You obviously cannot get these limited ones up here, but if you got the Bailu, if you got the Japad, or if you got the Bailu, as well as the links down here, pick two of them and just run with them. That's it, do not upgrade anyone else. The only case where I would invest into three of them is probably Fire Trailblazer. And the reason is because she is actually used in the story quite a fair bit, but she's also just a fantastic character. And in the early game, she is going to be a fantastic sustain. And so therefore, the last column, Damage Dealer. If it were me, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you at least start with one five-star DPS, whether it is the limited Jing Liu, or if you somehow happen upon the Clara or Himiko or whoever. That DPS is gonna be the one that is going to carry you all the way to end game as you build your teams. And so from there, you have two options. If you're able to secure, uh, for example, the Jing Liu on the limited banner early, I would probably then go for the Topaz. So you have two five-star DPSs that you can use for Memory of Chaos. However, if you don't want to go down that route, I would probably look at Qing Chue over here. Out of all of the other DPSs, out of all of the four stars, she is the queen, and most people can probably attest to that. Now, there are a few reasons for this, and the first is that QQ Qingchue, she is actually on the Jingliu banner. And if I'm rolling hard for Jingliu, chances are I'm actually going to get dupes for Qingchue. And the more dupes that you get for Qingchue, the more reliable she is going to be. So hopefully I would have like Jingliu and Qingchue on the other side. The other reason is because as you can see up there, she is of the quantum element. And so she actually would give us coverage of that element, meaning that we don't actually have to roll for Zila, who is also making a rerun very, very soon. In that case, we can then go ahead and roll for the Topaz over here, who is a fire DPS. So in that scenario, I'm gonna actually have Jing Liu, Topaz, and Qing Chue, three elemental coverage, which is fantastic. So yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. If I were to start again, I would probably re-roll for the Jing Liu. And if I can't re-roll for that, then I would just suck it up and take whatever. And then I would pour everything into the Jing Liu banner, potentially, hopefully, get a lot of Eidolons for the Qing Chue. And then also on top of that, try to go for the Topaz who is coming immediately after. I would definitely level up all of the offensive supports. I'm talking Asta, I'm talking the Pella, I'm talking Tingyun. And in terms of defensive supports, I'd probably look for the Lynx, Natasha, and Fire Trailblazer. Now, if Lynx wasn't available, I probably would use the March 7. So yeah, honestly, talking about all of that, like gets me pretty excited, right? Like if you could start again and have that kind of start, that, that would be freaking cracked out. So yeah, my guys, that would be the start that I would want. Let me know what you guys would go for. I'm betting that a lot of you are probably gonna say, oh, save for your Fushen or save for your Luo Cha. Or maybe even like hold on for your Huo Huo. My guys, let me know down in the comments on your thoughts. But otherwise, that is gonna be the end of the video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.